these guys survive the David Kahn era of Timberwolves basketball and live to tell about it. It's Flagrant Howls. Oh my God. I am still... I am like, I'm glued to the bottom of the backboard after watching that last night. Have you ever seen an NBA basketball player not like graze the bottom of the backboard, but like have his momentum like thud on the bottom of the backboard because he jumps up so high for a block or something else? That I, I don't know that I've ever seen something like that, like we saw with Ant last night. I'd have to go I'm convinced back. he would have went another six inches to a foot more up in the air if there wasn't a backboard. Yes. There. Easily. But what was more impressive, like that was incredible, but then the way he fell and he got up from it, I was, I mean, he fell like four, he, with, with no bracing. He, yeah, he said he did hurt his wrist a little bit, but I feel like every time he, he got hurt to start the game. He gets hurt. That That's what's weird is he now leaves games. It feels like, I mean, how many times has he left games like in the last, in this season alone, where you're like, oh my God, he's hurt. Oh no, this is going to be terrible. And, and he he's comes just back. back yeah. But that play, that play last night. Yeah. I, in, in fact, the first thing I, I saw, it took me until I saw it the second time to realize how hard it looked like his head hit off the rim because yeah. of, of how he fell. And I'm like, he's not getting up. And it's like, it he just was, got right up. Incredible well, he, play. He did. Incredible. Uh, 40. So Opta stats had this, by the way, flagrant howls, Timberwolves lifestyle podcast. Uh, great stuff from Jim Pete on the road before that game last night. If you haven't checked out yesterday's episode, Jim Pete is a regular on Thursdays on this podcast. We got Judd and Dex here today. Um, Opta Stats says NBA guards to score 40 plus points in a game while also blocking a shot in the final three seconds last 20 years. A lot of parameters there, but the only two players to do that is are, uh, Anthony Edwards last night and Kobe Bryant on January 11th. 2012. So, I mean, there's been some some playoff blocks in the last 20, 25 years. LeBron James has the most iconic block probably in NBA history in the NBA Finals, just chasing down, right? And then the Tayshaun Prince block in the Eastern Conference Finals, I think it was Reggie Miller that he tracked down. And I went back and watched that block this morning on YouTube. End of the food was like 20 seconds left in the fourth quarter. The Pistons were up 69 to 67 with like the game ending. That was two classic 2003 classic. NBA yeah, basketball. Some bad oh basketball God. back then. Like we romanticize about that Kings Wolves series from oh. the second round. Every game was like a grind to 84 points. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the pit and like the Pistons and Nets back then, they were, it was really ugly. Yeah, it was. And so you, but Tayshawn Prince went and tracked down. I'm pretty sure it was Reggie Miller and, and swatted that thing away to preserve a, a low scoring victory. But that's one of the great regular season game saving blocks that I don't know what the list is, but I don't remember one anyways in the last 10 or 15 years that, that matches what we saw last night. That play also, I think puts Matt uh, Ant on the map for a defensive player of the year candidate. Like he's great. He's been great. But as, as he said, I think it was two uh, two weeks ago after a win at Target Center. He's like, watch the effing games. Watch the effing games. People don't, <laughs> but he's not wrong. Like yeah. the national, I feel like that play because it's being played constantly on ESPN today, and it should be, and on highlight shows. That play, I think, is the it signals. Oh, I got to watch this guy more defensively. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. he scored forty four points. He scored the tie-breaking three, and I believe he scored the last eight Wolves points, right? So, like, offensively, he had a great game. It's wild. Yeah. But but what are people talking about and showing? That defensive play. So, like, I do think that that play is going to be a major step in, in the recognition of, oh, my God, this guy defensively is something special. Yes, and we will, we, we'll get to some Feedback Friday questions, too, just a small handful of them. And one of them has to do with Anthony Edwards and postseason awards. So, I, I have a a take on that, but we'll get to it on the feedback side. The other thing I was thinking about though, watching just the, God, the way that he, like you said, took the game over offensively, bang, knocking down a three bang mid range here. Right. And then he, and then he just Rudy Gobert was asked about the block after the game. And he said, that's what refusing to lose looks like. Just like wanting desperately to win. That's what that looks like. <laughs> Kevin Garnett is unquestionably the greatest player in Timberwolves history. And he's the best defensive player, too, in Timberwolves history. 
but he was more like a steady heartbeat of great basketball over 48 minutes. He wasn't a guy that was going to go get you 40 points very often. You know, he was never flirting with leading the league in scoring. He rarely took over games offensively in the way that Anthony Edwards can. And so I, maybe this is a hot take, but I don't think we've seen anything like this in 35 years of Timberwolves basketball, where it's a guy that can just literally go out there on both ends of the court and rise above some of the best players in the entire league to just completely take over a game in the last two minutes on both ends. And I, I think that's partially, too, because of the positions that we're talking about here, because Ant's a guard. And yeah, I think when the a, ball more. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, and, and I think when a guard, do, when a guard does dynamic things, it's probably the, the height of, of excitement. I mean, Garnett was a big man and he was fantastic, but big men usually have roles inside, right? They pound it. They block shots. I mean, Ant blocked a shot, but he did it by freaking running down the length of the floor and launching himself a la a, a Jordan type of launch. Yeah. Um, so I think that the way, to your point, I think what Ant can do just because of his position and size is just sexier because it's incredible. Like when you go back and watch that, he misses the free throw, realizes what the potential ramifications are, starts to just dart down the court, and then from some point takes off. Dude, it was it was wild. By the way, Alan Horton, if you haven't you can go find it on Alan Horton's Twitter account. A great call at the end of the game. Michael Grady had a Grady great had call. A good one too. On I had the TV side. I had one wish though, you guys. One wish came to, to mind, and both those guys are great. What if we could turn back the clock and have Kevin Harlan make that call? Oh, see, Kevin Harlan, because he kind of let Sean Grandy took over for Harlan in like 99, maybe, or 2000, somewhere in there. Or was it early 2000s? So he didn't really, he got, Harlan, I think, called the first Wolves playoff season. But he didn't get to call like a lot of the glory days. I feel he called a lot of dark mid nineties Wolves games where like J.R. Ryder was their best player. But I believe <laughs> that was the the call of I just saw a man fly. Yeah, I think that was J.R. Okay. Can you imagine the call last night? Man. Anyway, Man. I digress. Yeah. Well, let's get let's get to some feedback here because there's some Anthony Edwards related stuff, but uh, some Carl Anthony Town stuff too. Zach Stencil chimes in. This is through the feedback tab in the Score North app. With Carl Anthony Towns potentially missing the rest of the regular season, do you think Anthony Edwards, if he continues playing great and keeps the Wolves as a top two seed in the West, could stake a better claim at MVP? I don't think he would ultimately get it, but he could make an argument for consideration. I, I mean, if they stay as the number one seed over the next month, in Cat's absence, and it's because Anthony Edwards is now, now he's scoring 35 points a game down the stretch. He's playing clamps defense, and it's it, he's just taking over basically the entire gap that Carl Anthony Towns left. I don't know that he beats out Jokic. I don't know that he beats out even Jason Tatum, but he should absolutely rise in consideration, 100% in my opinion. Yeah, he has, he has a chance to get more love. I saw, I believe, Bill Simmons even said last night after the game, like, that's the best Anthony Edwards game I've ever seen. And I know Patrick Royce, he said that with us too earlier on Friday morning as well. But he has a chance here to really show how truly valuable he is. You talk about a guy who rises up in the competition and love me some Kevin Garnett during the KG days, but it took him getting Spree, him getting Cassell, him taking over that game seven against the Kings, but he really needed a supporting cast to get there, right? I think Ant has a chance here to really, again, rise above that competition. Still would be great to have Cat back for the playoffs. They'll need Cat, but he can really solidify himself as one of the best players in the league here if he balls out and keeps the Wolves as the number one seed. And plus, if Cat's here too, Ant defers to Cat at times. And mm -hmm. I, I think that the people that vote on the award are, are like, well, Ant's got Cat, and Cat's got Ant, right? Like, you strip if you strip one away and Ant does a semblance of what he did last night, then yeah, he's going to get included because it's going to be this recognition of, oh, we thought that, you know, you had to have Cat and Cat had to have you. So yes, I think that he definitely can. The question is, the question is, what's the supporting cast going to do around him now? Because it's still pretty good. It's not like it's bad um, to, to help out as well. Because I mean, he has to have them. 
But what he did last night was absolutely incredible. Well, and so a couple things on this. Yeah, he his game is suppressed a little bit. Not not it's not a bad thing. I mean, having Carl Anthony Towns and he's having one of the best seasons of his career, like you need that offense, you need that historic three point shooting for a seven footer. But like, yeah, Anthony, there's times during the game, obviously, where Anthony Edwards is deferring to to Carl and and those guys are both getting their own and combining for like what fifty points a game. But it was so interesting watching the way that he knew going into last night. Well, <laughs> until we figure out what this looks like, right? I'm going to shoot the ball thirty plus times, right. and, and I'm and I'm going to do it efficiently, and I'm just going to take over the game. And the way that everyone else kind of fills in and and fills the cracks around it, it's it's going to be a really interesting dynamic to watch here. Do I think Anthony Edwards shooting thirty five times and everybody else basically standing around is? a sustainable path to the Western conference finals. No, not necessarily, but, but he, what, what he's going to show you is there's that next level to his game where he probably could be dropping 40 plus points on a much more regular basis. Mm-hmm. If the team turned him loose and, and said, go for it. Now, is that the, the best way to win a bunch of games? I don't know, but last night it's interesting to look at the way they played this out. So Kyle Anderson, not Nas Reed, they kept Nas Reed with the second unit because he's probably their second best offensive player. And they don't want to take him off of a second unit that already has a hard time scoring. So uh, Kyle Anderson, much like last year when Cat was out, jumped into the four, played 28 minutes. Wasn't great, but did a bunch of good Kyle Anderson things and was a plus eight and, um, and, and filled in the cracks. Nas Reed only played 26 minutes. I sort of thought going into this road trip without Cat, he averages like 23 or 24 minutes. I figured, oh, that's going to jump to like 33 or 35 minutes a game. And there might be some nights where it does. But the other thing, TJ Warren last night, we talked about him earlier in the week. TJ Warren hasn't played a game in the NBA all year. He missed two years with a foot injury, then came back last year and just wasn't the same player. So he's, you know, he's kind of been like lost for three years since dominating the bubble back in 2020. And he comes in, plays 16 minutes off the street, was a plus three, you know, seven points off the bench. So if if you can um if you can get some quality minutes out of him too, that'll be interesting. But yeah, man, that's the that's that's the best game we've seen Anthony Edwards play. 100%. Hey, on, on Nasville, what, what's your opinion about him? Because the one thing that I, I feel like I, I see, and I don't have a statistical backup here, but it feels like there might be a reason why they're not they're not going to play him a ton more if they don't have to. It feels like when he comes off the bench and if the shot is falling, he's super effective. But the more that you try and put him into a role that's above his ordinary role, he can start to struggle. Is that correct? Because I just feel like there's times where he continues to shoot and now it doesn't start to fall and it becomes a little bit of an issue. But when he's in his specific role, he's really damn good. Well, yeah, I think it's yet to be pro- We know he's really good in these 20, like 18 to 23 minute chunks. We, mm-hmm. we know who he is and he's one of their most valuable players in that role. We've seen him stretch it out to be more of a 33 to 35 minute starter level minutes guy when guys are injured, but we don't have enough of a sample size to say that, yep, Nas Reed as a 34, 35 minute guy is going to be the same player that he is in the 23 minutes. And I kind of thought we might see more of that last night, but um, we got 40 minutes of Rudy Gobert, the 28 minutes of Kyle Anderson, Jaden McDaniels is going to keep playing big minutes and he played almost 30 minutes last night. Uh, Nikki and, and so like Nikhil Alexander Walker played 28 minutes. So you, like, how did they fill in the minutes without Carl? Right. It was increasing right. Nikhil's minutes. It was 16 minutes of TJ Warren. It was increasing Kyle Anderson's minutes. And uh, it was actually increasing Rudy Gobert's minutes too, just keeping him out there for all but eight minutes. But we'll see. We, I think it'll at some, there's going to be some games where you will see Nas read out there for more than 26 minutes last night. Just, he, it wasn't. He was actually a minus 12 last night. In and Gobert, you probably got to come back down on a little bit there, too. Yeah, the 40 minutes. I In the playoffs? Okay, like, right, cool, but, play 40 minutes. But, but not now. Yeah. Uh, Dan Kraft says, the national media has been waiting since November for the Timberwolves to slip up. They haven't so far. But then Cat gets hurt, and every effing national headline is, the Wolves' chances plummet. They're screwed. 
the Wolves are the four seed at best, et cetera, et cetera. At least maybe they'll acknowledge the Wolves now that Carl is out. He sent this before the game last night. Mm -hmm. I will say this morning I was watching Get Up on ESPN with our guy Mike Greenberg, and they did lead Get Up with the Anthony Edwards block. They did. But then it's funny because I felt like Greeny was trying to explain to the world and the audience. Now, okay. We're going to show you a Timberwolves highlight. The Timberwolves, they're they're a basketball team in the National Basketball Association from Minneapolis, St. Paul. And Anthony Edwards is a player for the Timberwolves. So now we're going to show you the highlight, right? It's like, okay, let's let's give fans a little more credit. Like Anthony Edwards, people know who he is, I feel like. And now a deep dive on Boston and Denver because that was (laughs) the game of the night. They did that, yeah. (laughs) Well, dude, uh, when the cat injury news came down yesterday, what show was I? Was it? It might have been the second hour of Get Up, because the cat news came down. I think in the morning yesterday. It did. It came down during. And Get Up, get up. brings in their NBA panel. Yeah. We're going to bring in Austin Rivers, a former Timberwolf. We're going to yes. bring in whoever else, right? And we're going to talk about a major injury in the Western Conference. LeBron James has tendonitis in his ankle. <laughs> oh, funny! <laughs> and he might not play the second night of back-to-backs going forward. Like, oh, well, okay, I get it. It's LeBron, but. It is funny how, like, the national media, a lot, like, Ryan rossillo has been on the ant train for a long time, and Kendrick Perkins has been driving it for two years now. But that block last night brings all these people out of the woodworks. Yeah. Whoa, holy cow, Anthony Edwards can play basketball. What the heck's going on? Perk loves the Wolves. I'll mm-hmm. give him that. He's all in on the Timberwolves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Yep. And Austin Rivers is too. But he also was, like, in that locker room for right. the entire year last year, so he might be a little biased. So, okay, uh, and then the last one for you guys here is from Graham Power, and he says, with the news of Cat's knee injury and him being out indefinitely, will this show what the Wolves could look like without him going forward, and will this determine whether the Wolves keep or move on from Cat during the summer? Mm-hmm. I, love I knew this question, question was going was to pop question. up at some point. Well, a couple things. Number one, this is a huge blow. Like there's no, for anyone that's trying to frame this as like, Oh, like they're going to, we're going to remove cat from the equation. I was guilty of that a year or two ago. I say guilty, but like there was major reason to believe watching the way that he would stumble around in these playoff series and some of these big games that God, maybe if you just like inserted a different type of a player, but to his credit, he's done a magnet. And we've, we've diagrammed this all throughout the year on flagrant house. His fouls have been down. His shooting has been more efficient and up. His defense has been better. He's just like a more fully realized, better version of himself this year. He's done a really good job fitting into sort of the the, the structure of Rudy Gobert over here and Anthony Edwards over there. Right. But the answer to this question is, yes, they're going to get a look at what does it look like without him. I don't think they're going to be better but could they be really good still in just a different way? And could they be running some different sets like they were last night? Yes. And could the new ownership decide come June or July when the NBA's calendar flips over that, man, still hung on to the number one seed without Cat. We'll see what happens in the playoffs and if Cat can come back for the first or second round. Mm-hmm. Do we pay second apron luxury tax and the penalties that go along with it? Or do we look to clear out a chunk of salary cap and make a move and get some assets? I don't think you can just say right now, oh, this means he's gone for sure. But it opens an interesting window if this team continues to play really well Mm -hmm. in just a different way. And it becomes even more of an Anthony Edwards centric thing. What are the decisions by the front office and the new ownership group in a few months? I also wonder, too, because Ant's probably going to get all NBA consideration for one of the three teams for sure. Yep. But with Cat now getting injured, that probably takes him out of getting all NBA, which also would bump up oh, yeah. their salaries, right? Because if they get all NBA, they get an, an additional... Isn't their It'll cap take, hits go up? That would, no, that would be for the next contract is how that usually works, right? Got it. Unless, there Maybe there's, I guess, but like Cat won't make all NBA, to your point. Right. So. Yeah, I thought there was something where if they make all NBA, there, there they... is because Cat Cat's salary went up when he made third team mm-hmm. all in NBA. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was intriguing. In I think it was his pregame yesterday after sh- uh, shoot around in Indianapolis that Chris Finch was openly talking about like what they couldn't do because Cat was out, but then he conversely talked about what they could do. And, yep. and and how so I I think from uh like 
just for a second, forget the contractual side and the business side from a basketball side. I, I think it almost read, and I'm not saying Finch is pleased because I don't think he's pleased one bit, but it almost read like he's curious to see what this changes because there's no question there is probably some things that when you play your regular lineup that you can't do. So, and and I'm with you, Phil, in no way, shape or form is this good. So I'm not trying to say that, but I do think there is a curiosity about what, what you can do with Ant in charge of the show completely and with a different element, probably of, of athletic ability on the court from Cat, who is a very specific type of player and very talented. Also, the Pacers, the Pacers came in last night averaging 124 points per game, and the Wolves, without Cat, who's been a, like Cat's size and his defense this year, have been an asset to the Wolves. Most definitely, and they still held the Pacers to like 13 points below their season average. That's one of the best offensive teams no. in the NBA, and uh, and Halliburton's out there still doing his thing. So. Super interesting, super interesting. And yeah, it is It is a bad thing that Cat is out, but it doesn't need to mean, there's a middle ground here. It doesn't need to be doom and gloom. And it might also be that they just find a different way to be as good. It's more Anthony Edwards. It's more Nas Reed. Uh, maybe it's more Rudy Gobert in some certain ways because he played the 40 minutes last night. So, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, that was that was a blast last night they play the Cavs tonight it's their gazillionth back-to-back since the all-star break and the Cavs are one of the best teams in the NBA so we'll see uh we'll see how they fare thank you guys for hanging out with us on flagrant howls a Timberwolves lifestyle podcast